You're listening to The Peach Pit. I'm here talking with Jake Tizell from the band Sleep Circle from Vancouver. Their album, From the Heavens Through the Window, came out in 2019, and they've since then followed it up with two EPs just to prove that with a name like Sleep Circle, these guys are actually really active. Jake, thank you so much for taking time to talk to me, and welcome to The Pit. Hi, Derek. Thank you so much for having me. I feel as though for us to properly do this interview, we should be having a beer. I I would have to agree with that. Um, Is three uh, o'clock in the afternoon too early? uh, No, (laughs) you know what? I I don't think so. It's uh, it's five o'clock somewhere, as as they say. Well, uh, are you at home right now? Can you go grab a beer? I am at home. I'm going to pass on the beer today, but you know what? I I hope you enjoy. Um, I I will uh, uh, enjoy another uh, legal government substance, uh, cannabis. Uh, Oh, okay. Fair enough. Fair enough. Well, then cheers to that. Cheers to that, my friend. (laughs) <laughs> it's all legal. We're allowed to do this, everybody. <laughs> great, great. So I'll go grab my beer then. I'll be right back. All right. I'm here. <laughs> I put it in the freezer. I like it extra cold. Oh, that's that's smart thinking. Do you uh, do you like your beers extra cold? Do you ever do that? Yeah, I do. You know, it depends. When you go to the liquor store or whatever, sometimes they don't have what you want in the cold zone. So then you got to put, put maybe two of them in the freezer and then let the other four get cold in the fridge. Right. Yeah, you you totally got the same strategy. I get it. All right. Well, here we are. Cheers. <laughs> we have it on the recording. All right. I think a good place for us to begin is I like to always start with people's origin stories. As I imagine everybody is a superhero. So I need to know your origin story. And it seems to go back to this time that maybe you can tell us about when a substitute teacher came into your class and he played a blind melon song. Wow. Yeah. Um, that pretty much... I think is is the the defining moment of when I knew that I wanted to play music. Yeah, he uh, he played "Mouthful of Cavities" by Blind Melon and sang on his guitar. And I'm like, I I really want to play music. And uh, and next thing you know, I got a guitar for my uh, my birthday that year. And I mean, it's it's a uh, it's geez, been close to twenty years now since that. But I I, I wouldn't change it for the world. And what grade was that? must have been five or six right so you would have been like eight or nine years yeah old, right think, around right? there i'm i'm 30 now so i would say about that yeah right and so uh just can you remember what that was like like hearing that blind melon song like what was it about that moment that you can really take away it was like what was something new you'd never seen anything like that before i think that that was new because i mean for for a kid of of that age in maybe the late 90s early aughts like i think rap was taking over and and don't get me wrong i i can i totally appreciate that style of music as well but um i think just seeing that and seeing somebody playing music live and seeing that it's that is something that you can do and that anybody can do for that matter i mean permitting uh everything yeah yeah (laughs) i think but it seems like for you because like i would consider you a singer songwriter like you really get into the passion of the music and not just playing the music to show off that you're doing notes it's like you actually dig into like why am i playing the song what does the song mean and maybe that kind of comes back from that first experience i you know what it's it's an interesting thought definitely i and i can't say that i've ever psychoanalyzed <laughs> playing music in that way before but i i can can say you're more than likely right on that one so you picked up guitar and then you started playing started learning did you join any bands in high school who abandoned high school um yeah i was in a band uh, an iron maiden tribute band actually no way. Was, was my first band called gypsy curse um and uh it was great. It was actually um, four four dudes from the Czech Republic uh, and myself, um, and so they were they were all the gypsies, and I guess I was the curse. I don't know. Um, <laughs> <laughs> they they referred to themselves as as gypsies, so those that's their words, not uh, not mine. 
And so, so you guys were doing that for a couple of years, and yeah, then... I think that lasted maybe a year or whatever, and then I kind of uh, went on and did uh, a lot of stuff um, on my own, just under my own name, Jake Tuzel. Um, right. Yeah, quite a few years of, of the the singer songwriter style, which led into Jake Tuzel band. Um, right. I, which eventually led me to to Sleep Circle. Um, which I did, uh, I did join as a, a new singer. I was not the original singer, but, uh, right. I think it, it's, it's been great. It's a very cool journey to be able to create with, uh, with all the guys and, and then let's go you, back a little bit. Let's just, okay. I just, going back to the Jake Tazell band with your first EP, Bad Faith, uh, that, that must've been really where you started your first relationship with Matt Roach. Cause he said, did the drums for that EP, right? Yeah, he did. He engineered the uh, the drums on that EP. Um, but uh, Jeff Zip uh, produced that EP at uh, what was then called Whiteheart Studios. Now he operates uh, Light Machine Records in Vancouver uh, in a studio adjacent to Rain City Recorders where Matt Roach works. Okay, so is uh, from rubbing elbows with Matt Roach, is that how you got introduced to the guys in Sleep Circle? Or how I did think, you all meet each other? You know what? It actually is a funny story. We met because uh, Jake Tuzel Band opened for Sleep Circle oh, at okay. their From the Heavens Through the Window uh, release party. Um, and uh, for some reason or another, uh, Curtis, the, the old singer, had to leave the group for for personal reasons and i jumped in and i said well i'll do it and uh we kind of went from there so we had um it was kind of rushed how it happened because um it was maybe canada day weekend 2019 that um i heard that they were looking for a singer um and i was in vancouver island at the time as uh, soon as I got back, I went and did the audition and then found out a little bit more info. It's like, oh, we're in this situation. Our singer left, but we've been booked to open for truck fighters at the rickshaw um, at, uh, in, in August, uh, about two years ago this time. Right. Um, and so it was kind of like crunch time. I had to learn all this material and, um, but it, Again, a, a great experience, and I think it uh, it proved that we we work together musically, and uh, and and yeah, I mean it's it's kind of created this great foundation that we've built uh, our new new EPs, uh, Strange Life and Renegade upon. It seems like such a natural musical evolution for you guys. When going back to the early stuff, and then up to now like your voice didn't take the band into completely new, different, completely different territory. I feel like you're still sleep circle. This is just like a, a new refined formation of the, the same sound. Yeah. I, I, I think that was my goal in the beginning and especially on, on strange life. Um, we, I think we're still trying to, keep the same vibe you know but at the same time not like pigeonhole ourselves i like to think that we've we've kind of evolved a little bit musically because the addition of me into the group was um different than than the experience they had before like now uh we i i play guitar on occasion so that uh i think adds a lot in in certain songs where that maybe didn't happen before and it must also free up you, you guys to just add more musical ideas. It's like now uh, the singer can focus on singing, or if you need an additional third guitar in a se section, you just kind of have more options, right? Exactly, yeah. And we've since, um, Ian, our bass player, has a, uh, a Moog synth, so we've been oh, cool. sl <laughs> slowly introducing that into, uh, into our live set. So doing doing the bass and the synth thing like Getty Lee, like <laughs> yeah, I think it's 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 trying to I I, I kind of want it to be weird, you know. I want it to be good, but I want it to be weird. 
Okay. I think I get where you're coming from. Uh, so this band, it's got to be an interesting dynamic because you got two brothers, Paul and Andrew. Yeah. I, it's, watching this dynamic, is it kind of funny sometimes? Do they rag on each other a lot? A little bit here and there. You know how brothers do. I think uh, it's, it's kind of funny because um, my brother growing up uh, played drums. Um, never took it seriously or anything but uh so i know the kind of dynamic of like trying to play music with your brother and just like seeing them in general um do you do you have any siblings yes but i'm not in a band with them <laughs> <laughs> yeah uh yeah it, it's i mean i wouldn't call it challenging but they they can definitely clash at times <laughs> uh and coming this is ep that you did called strange life i mean you didn't even know how strange life was going to get when you put it wow. out right you you really this is right before the pandemic right so after you guys did that you all the work putting that out and then that happens what was it like for you switching gears all of a sudden going okay now this is the state of the world and we just put out our ep like come on <laughs> yeah you know what it's so weird because we actually released it on uh march 13th uh 2020 and uh we had a, a release party at the ellis building in vancouver and the next day the world shut down yeah right yeah. It, it, <laughs> we had we had a, a tour lined up we were gonna hit uh a bunch of towns and cities across bc and then unfortunately it just ended up being the socially responsible thing to do to to cancel all of them and so what did, what did you remember it being like for you? How did you shift gears? What did you focus on? Well, at first it was, um, it was strange because um, we, I guess it was right at the height of uh, people's fear of, of the COVID-19 or as it was then called coronavirus, because it was so new, you hear, you hear all these stories and videos of people dropping dead all over the world and so it was kind of like for us we we didn't really practice or see each other we we did some zoom calls but largely it was just uh staying at home and i i played a lot of guitar alone i um i made sourdough bread as you do um, <laughs> <laughs> um yeah i mean it, it just kind of turned into a lot of, of time at home and so, make baking bread was one of the ways that you found to pass the time was there any other hobbies or something that you found yourself going to just kind of help yourself get through life yeah i mean i do like to drink that does help uh, <laughs> a lot i don't know if i is it if it's problematic to call it a hobby but <laughs> <laughs> beer beer definitely does does help uh I, cannabis as well um i think listening to music um i have a couple of cats which are really nice they're they're good to spend time with um but unfortunately yeah i don't think i really learned any other new skills or hobbies um yeah i, I don't know there seemed to be a lot of pressure on people to learn new skills this year and yeah i, I didn't learn any new skills either <laughs> I think, yeah, I know a lot of people are like, well, oh, you can't waste all this time. And I'm like, you know what, in a, in a way, I think maybe it's better if you do, you know, because it's like when, when else in your life for most people, do you get a chance to just kind of like take a step back and like look at life and, and the importance of things in a different way? Absolutely. Absolutely. I, I agree with you 100%. Uh, and now switching to Renegades. Okay, this, Renegade. this EP. Let's talk about this. You went back, obviously, you guys are working with Rain City Recorders again and Matt Roach. Yeah. Uh, so has that become a really good re working relationship? Are you really familiar with them? Yeah, it's Matt. Matt is a great, great person. I think he really gets us um, musically. Um and uh and of course the space is is amazing if if you ever get the chance you should check out rain city recorders um we did a live stream there if you want to kind of get a, a little visual of of the interior it's on our youtube um but yeah i think it's just he's he's so good uh for us and the proximity to 
our our jam space and the i guess just the connection to the rest of the music scene is is what keeps us coming back and and what about the writing process for renegades is it much similar to how you guys did things before before do you guys like to always get in the room together to write or is it kind of like all coming down the pipe from like paul yeah well it in the beginning it it was uh kind of us just sending recordings back and forth um but eventually yeah once we got back into the jam space and started uh writing it does it usually paul or kavi and uh the other guitar player will come up with a riff um and we'll build the song around that all together in the room so it is really a collaborative kind of experience after the original idea absolutely yeah and then or they'll there was a time I think where I, I was away. And so the guys were practicing and I came back and they had this great song. And so it's nice to be able to sit down after the fact and then maybe change things up a little bit. I don't want to necessarily say produce it, but it is, everybody's very open to each other's input because we all want each other to be happy and satisfied with, with the, the end goal which is the song right and I, w- I had a hard time finding the lyrics anywhere online but i was listening to the song renegade and it sounded like you were saying the revolution's dead is that what you're saying yeah um so renegade is actually uh, a bit of a, a concept album um uh about renegade the titular character um he's kind of like a, a cyborg that uh, travels through space and time um but this this song and the introduction to him is his death basically um and and there in in the future the the, the story will be explained a little bit more but you gotta you gotta wait for the next uh, ep or, or album Oh, that's awesome. So we're, we're tying it together. So is this figure on the the cover, is this supposed to be the Renegade? That is Renegade, yeah. Okay, and what more can you tell us about the cover art? Why did you choose it? Oh, so actually, um, it, uh, it was done by a, an artist named Caleb Worcester. Um, Shout out. Yeah, I believe he, he lives in Kansas, and we saw... Um, uh, the art on Instagram or Reddit, I believe it was. And I had to reach out to him and I said, wow, this is amazing. Like, can we, can we commission this from you? Um, and, uh, and sure enough, yeah, we got it. But I think it, it just happened to, to fit in so well with, with this kind of concept universe that I had in my head um, that, yeah, it, it, we knew that that was the, the visual representation that we wanted the water seemed to be like a kind of symbolic thing in the picture. Does, does the water mean anything to you or is it kind of just more like a visual thing? Just kind of don't it's, question it, go with it. <laughs> yeah. It's more of a visual. Um, but I guess that could be kind of like a, a world that, that renegade uh, has ended up on. But I think the, the, the triangle to me symbolizes like a portal, like moving on to, to the next world or, or the next moment in time okay huh cool i'm really excited to see where this story goes now this is really cool yeah we're actually uh uh, there's another track on the um on the ep called condition uh which talks about uh, another character called oracle um which there there are similar plans uh for uh future storytelling and also a music video is uh, is in the works for that one so do you think this is going to be kind of your framework moving forward creatively with the band are you going to try to tell stories tie everything together or do you think this is just kind of something you're doing right now it's hard to say where we'll be in the future but i do find it really almost like cathartic to like write write and create these these stories where it's in in previous i've drawn inspiration from 
my personal life experience. But I think it's interesting to formulate uh, a person or have cyborg man being and then write about the psychoanalysis of them. <laughs> it, yeah. sounds, it sounds weird, but I, I love it. Well, it's like by by looking at this other character, we we see the similarities from their story to our own. It's, I think that's really cool. It's like projecting or something. Yeah, kind of, and and I think it, it's great lyrical fodder too because it's. Um, I mean, I'm a big, I guess, sci-fi and and fantasy kind of nerd. If you couldn't tell already, um, <laughs> so I think it's it's nice to be able to develop songs off that and it's it's great lyrical fodder i find um instead of like oh what should i write a song about and like i'm just gonna write a song that details this ridiculous hypothetical adventure through space and time <laughs> have you have you uh you said you're into fantasy have you ever played dungeons and dragons not as many times as i'd like to um oh but so you are into it I, I am into it. You know, for, for Dungeons & Dragons, uh, the, the ones you should talk to are, are Paul or Ian. They both love it. I wish that either of them were here to talk a little bit more about it, but <laughs> it is a cool game. I, I would like I would appreciate the chance to play it again. Maybe Sleep Circle should make their own dice set. Ooh, a Sleep Circle D&D &D dice set. That's I'd a buy great it. Idea. Okay. I, perfect. <laughs> I'd be your first customer. <laughs> awesome. Okay. <laughs> great. Uh, moving on. Uh, you guys did a cover of the Black Sabbath song, uh, "Children of the Grave." You did the Black Sabbath cover. You guys did a really awesome uh, job of it too. Was it hard to choose what song to do for a cover? Uh, do you mean in like picking from? black sabbath's catalog or in general just in general i imagine was it did you guys know for sure you wanted to do a black sabbath song was that like already agreed upon it was it was my idea to do a black sabbath song um and and i suggested children of the grave because i thought it would just be a fun uh thing to add to to our live show um which ended up being an online show um right but yeah i i I grew up with Black Sabbath, so I think it was a, an easy choice. It, but what about choosing that song? Was that the hard choice? No, I don't think it was a hard choice. I think that the guys all took to it really, really well. And it was, we play uh, in, in drop C tuning. Um, so it translated really nicely uh, down to, to where we play. Okay, so did you already have that song in mind before? Yeah, um, I guess I, I I probably always wanted to cover it in uh, <laughs> in the back of my head. Awesome! So finally, things have come to fruition. That's yeah. wicked. <laughs> exactly. and it was great. By the way, you guys absolutely killed it. It was really awesome. good. Oh, thank you. I appreciate that. Uh, I want to ask you about the TikTok videos. <laughs> oh, good. Okay, here we go. <laughs> They're so funny. They are just so fucking hilarious. <laughs> I, cause I'm not even a TikTok guy. But I, I just saw them because you post some of them on Instagram. But I, I went to TikTok, to the website, for the first time in my life just because I wanted to watch all of your videos. <laughs> They're <laughs> so funny. Thank so, you so much. Is this mostly uh, coming from your imagination? Yeah. it's um, it, it's. I think it started as a joke where I downloaded TikTok and uh, it was right around the time we, we were putting out Renegade in March. And... Uh, and then I just started seeing um, things that made me laugh, just and and things that are typical of of local bands and and musicians in general, for that matter. Um, and and I tried to make funny, relatable content out of it. Um, but yeah, I'm I'm really glad to to make 
or to hear that they make you laugh because he, <laughs> I mean, I was pretty satisfied with just like being able to laugh at myself, but you know what, if it's working for you, hell yeah, brother. <laughs> <laughs> My favorite one was the, how, how to be successful in the music industry. And then <laughs> step one, have rich parents. And then the video just ends. Like, that's it. That's all you need to do. <laughs> Congratulations. <laughs> that was so good. Uh, for full disclosure, my parents are not rich. Um, but, <laughs> but it does help. <laughs> it, does, it does help. And, you know, I mean, I, I, I'm not going to name drop, but I, I, there, I've definitely met a few people like that in, in my lifetime. Yeah, yeah, they they are out there, and most of them are also doing really well on Spotify. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah it, but I mean, you can buy Spotify plays if you really want to. Like, yeah, that's true. Yeah, it's, it's kind of messed <laughs> up, right? Uh, <laughs> so, have you ever considered doing comedy in any capacity? Like, maybe not stand up, but maybe sketches or something like that. Just because you you seem to have a real knack for comedy. Thank you. Uh, I I would love to do that. I I've considered doing stand up a lot, um, but it it comes down to like getting a routine together, and I just don't time. know that it's something that I have to, the extra time to commit to right now in my life. But absolutely, and sketch comedy for that matter, improv, like I'll do it all. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> I, someday we'll see it all. It's going to be like one day. <laughs> But what do you see on the horizon for yourself right now? I mean, I know you guys are getting ready. You're going to do the show on October 15th at the Rickshaw Theater. Everyone around the greater Vancouver area should go check that out. Uh, yes. But other than that, what's on the horizon for you? Uh, we will be uh, working on a music video for Condition off of the Renegade EP, um, which will be the first uh, visual representation of... Uh, the sleep circle cinematic universe as i have dubbed it <laughs> that's the good way of dubbing it yeah <laughs> thank you thank you um so yeah we're working on that um we've got uh, a bunch of new songs uh in the pipe so i think it's going to be uh, a lot of demo recording and uh, uh pre-production stuff and and hopefully before the end of the year we'll get back into to rain city and and pump out some new tracks that's awesome. So you guys have already gotten quite a few things written already for the next release, eh? Yeah, yeah. We don't know when, uh, and things are still coming together. But uh, yeah, more more than a few songs are, are ready to go, and we're we're actually even going to debut uh, one or two of them at uh, at the rickshaw on October fifteenth. Great, awesome. I I wish I could be there. <laughs> oh, me too. <laughs> uh, this is a question that I always ask people. It's kind of just become a staple question I ask my guests, and it's kind of corny, but I still like to ask it. What advice would you give to anyone who's just trying to achieve their dreams? Quit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God, that was so funny. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Oh, fuck, that was funny. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, uh, I think what what I can say is in in the world there's going to be a lot of people that want you to please them, but ultimately I think my advice would be to to stay true to yourself, you know, and stay true to your vision and and try not to let everybody other people cloud it. Wise words from someone who knows everybody. Well put. I like it. Thank you so much. <laughs> Is there anything else that you would like to say to our listeners? Well, I want to say thank you so much for listening to uh, to the Peach Pit. This is great. And thank you so much, Derek, for having me on. Uh, this has been a, a great experience. It's been my pleasure. That's, that's why I do this. <laughs> I would be listening to you guys' music anyway, so now I get the chance to say, oh, I, I know him when. <laughs> oh, thank you so much. Well, and you know what? If I'll, I'll be sure to... To, to get in touch if uh, if and when we're playing in Penticton, because I would love to. Absolutely. I'll make sure that there's an audience. Awesome. Thank you so much, my friend. <laughs> You've been listening to The Peach Pit. I've been here talking with Jake Tazell from the band Sleep Circle from Vancouver. Their new EP, Renegade, came out a couple months ago. And if you're in the greater Vancouver area, ah, 
if you're in the greater Vancouver area on October 15th, make sure you go check them out at the Rickshaw Theatre. Jake, thank you so much for taking time to talk to me, and hopefully we'll do it again in the future. Thank you so much, Derek. Have a great day. You too. Thanks. Cheers.